Hello everyone, Wasim with NeoSeeker here and welcome to another video review. So today we'll be looking at the Radeon RX 480, the new Polaris based card from AMD, uh, FinFET, 14 nanometer manufacturing process for the GPU, um, GDDR5, there's no uh, high bandwidth memory this time. So there was a lot of uh, teasing about this card, a lot of rumors, yeah, so let's take a look and see what it, what it is about. Uh, first of all, let's see what it looks like. So, as you can see, it's very, very similar to the Fury uh, reference design uh, with the Radeon logo right here. We have the dimpled accent on the shroud. Um, on this side, we find another logo and the uh, single six pin uh, power supply, uh, power uh, power connector, sorry. Uh, on this section here, there's really nothing going on. And going back to the PCI connector, that's all what it is. Now, if we look at the back of the card, there's no backplate. Uh, reference design again. And as you can notice, the, the shroud and the cooling solution extends over the uh, PCB. The PCB is quite short, so if we do a quick measurement here, the card itself is nine and a half inches, and the PCB is seven inches. So nine and a half by three and a half, roughly. And that's the card. Um, not very big, and it should fit in most uh, cases without issues, and as you can see here also, the air intake is right in the back of the card. So, well, it shouldn't be an issue also if you have crossfire going on. Um, but, well, if the cards are too close together, that might be a little bit annoying. But, well, we'll, we'll see how it goes when people start putting these in crossfire. Uh, in terms of connectivity, what we have here, we have a unique HDMI uh, port and then three uh, display ports that are I think 1.2 certified and then 1.3 and 1.4 ready so HDR is possible with this card. Now the review sample I have here is the 8 gigabit version so there will be two versions of the RX uh, 480 available at launch. Uh, 4 gigabit version which is supposed to retail for 199 uh, US dollars and then the 8 gigabit version that we're looking at today, which will be $239. Now that's very interesting price point because looking at the, uh, for example, the 1080 and the 1070 right now, we're way above the uh, 300 mark. So uh, close to 400 and the 1080 is over 600. So with this card, AMD is going for the mid range, uh, like very entry level mid range, I would say, like the, 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 that segment where most most market shares are. So a lot of gamers, a high percentage of gamers and average people when they buy a video card, they will stick to the one hundred to three hundred dollar range apparently. So that's that's a very important, um, I guess, market segment and. Yeah, so AMD is going for that. And right now, looking at the prices of video cards, what's available and what could compete against this card fairly. Uh, well, the first thing that comes to mind is the GTX 970. So basically, and I will mention it later uh, during the benchmark section, what I ended up doing is I ended up comparing the Radeon RX 480 to an EVGA GTX 970 super clocked. Uh, this card is very similar in price as far as I can see right now online. And in terms of performance, well, I, I don't want to uh, spoil the spoil the video right now, but they're they're pretty close. So, what do we get with the Radeon? RX 480 that that makes it interesting. So AMD wants to bring VR capable card like premium VR basically experience to the masses at that price point if this card performs very good for VR that will be wonderful. Unfortunately I don't have uh, a VR headset uh, yet so I can't really test that. However 
we'll just do some uh, standard uh, game benchmarks and that will give us an idea about the performance. Uh, other than that, in terms of specifications, so we have the fourth generation GCN architecture, the graphics core next uh, architecture from AMD, uh, 36 compute units, uh, 2,304 stream processors, the clock speeds, uh, the base speed will be 1120 megahertz and a boost of uh, 1266 megahertz. Now, the memory size, as I mentioned earlier, will be 4 or 8 gigabytes. And uh, the memory interface is 256-bit uh, GDDR5 memory from Samsung here. And the uh, TDP is 150 watts. So the card is, of course, uh, FreeSync capable, DirectX 12, Vulkan support also here. And uh, we get the, um, as I mentioned earlier, the DisplayPort uh, 1.3 and 1.4 ready. Now, let's go and take a look at the software, and then we'll, we'll do the, uh, a little bit of an analysis on the benchmarks for the games. Alright guys, here we are with the Radeon settings, or the Radeon software. So, on top of the improvements to the hardware and uh, the new features that TRX480 uh, brings to the table, AMD also implemented some new features uh, into their software too. Um, we're gonna keep this one really uh, short and sweet because I'll be making a separate video on how to overclock the RX 480 and how to use the actual uh, Radeon software to do that. So really quick, I'm just gonna show you. So if you go to the gaming section here, you'll find multiple profiles uh, for your installed games, or at least some of them. Uh, now, at this level, you can actually launch the game remove the profile but uh, here there's supposed to be two more settings one of them is to disable the actual profile now I in my benchmarking I did some testing with the profiles enabled and disabled it didn't really affect um, the results so I'm gonna say that's fine and if you go to global settings and uh, you have a little bit more settings here and AA uh, the shader cache, OpenGL, tessellation mode, and so on. However, what's interesting is the uh, global Wattman. I like the uh, <laughs> the naming Wattman. Uh, if you guys uh, have modified your PlayStation 3s back in the day, you know uh, some of the software is used there. You know Webman and Multiman. It's funny naming anyway I don't know if that's related or not however uh, yeah so in here you can capture some of your uh, GPU activity data and also we have some basically uh, options to, to overclock the card frequency voltage memory and also the fan and the temperature uh, controls so we'll we'll take a look at this uh, more in depth in the in the overclocking video however I wanted to show you that it's right here uh, it exists and I'm gonna try to take advantage of it alrighty so uh, without any delays let's go and take a look at the actual performance of the card and wrap this review up all right guys so performance levels um, I did some initial testing and it was really obvious that the RX 480 uh, will not be performing at the same level as let's say a, a 1080 or even a 980 uh, GTX uh, card so what I decided to do is I decided to compare it to an EVGA GTX 970 um, super clocked card which kind of made sense to me because right now on the market if you're if you're going to buy a, a GTX 970 I don't think you'll be able to find a reference card so all the cards that are available are mostly um, partner uh, cards and custom boards um, overclocked like factory overclocked with some 
you know, spe special uh, or uh, custom cooling solution and so on. So that kind of made sense to me. Uh, plus, looking at the other offerings from AMD, like the previous uh, cards, the RX 480 was uh, more powerful than the, uh, let's say, the 380X uh, by a good margin. And unfortunately, I don't really have any uh, 390 or 390X uh, to benchmark against that. So I was stuck with basically the one card from NVIDIA that kind of made sense. Otherwise, if I throw in a 1080 in there, we'll see a, a huge difference in performance. And any other cards, like lower cards, um, I don't know, 950 or uh, 380, 370 from AMD, <coughs> again, the difference will be will be huge. And also, it didn't really make sense. So I left it to the to the obvious. Uh, AMD with the RX 480 was going for the GTX 970. So here we are, like the the two uh, the two rivals basically uh, playing it right here. So uh, Firestrike 3D Mark, uh, as you can see through Firestrike, Firestrike Extreme, and Firestrike Ultra, the results are very very close. Just a few points here and there. Uh, in terms of difference the 970 is pulling ahead a little bit but you know uh, overall very very similar performance so if we go into haven benchmark so here too you can see there's um well about i would say what five frames difference at 1080p otherwise at 1440 and 4k is pretty similar so going from there I decided to only benchmark uh, the actual gaming benchmarks at 1080p and 1440p because the card is really not for 4k gaming we're, we're not there yet it has good potential there's lots of uh, features and options but it even AMD didn't really push it as a 4k card it has good potential for VR, okay, but in terms of pure gaming, 1080p, 1440p, and you'll get some decent or good performance. Uh, so that's what I well, that's what I went with. Now for Ashes of the Singularity, this is the um, the X12 uh, version of the game, basically, because you can run it at either the X11 or the X12. So. In here it was the uh, high preset and the X12. So in terms of performance, the RX 480 pulled ahead, and not by a large margin, but still uh, we get slightly better performance uh, from the AMD card. Now moving on to Far Cry Primal, and uh, this benchmark you can see also it's very very close. So 86, 85, at 1080p, and then basically both cards scored the 55 frames per second uh, average at 1440p now this is a DX11 uh, game we're going to GTA 5 here the 970 was slightly ahead again uh, so as you can see like cards are trading blows basically it's one game here and one game there for each camp um, if we move to oh yeah and the GTA 5 benchmark it was a mix of high and very high settings uh, all games were run with uh, VSync off and if there was anything that was purely Nvidia for example it was also turned off now Hitman Hitman this benchmark I ran it at DX uh, 12 high preset as you can see, the RX 480 here was was ahead of the GTX 970 by a really good margin, 77.4 uh, 1080p versus 63.3, and then in 1440p, 56.6 uh, versus 45. And looking at uh, Middle Earth, uh, Shadow of Mordor, again the RX 480 uh, was slightly ahead. So 86.4 versus 80.74 in 1080p and then 
61.3 versus 59. Again, th the difference is not huge, but still, it's there. Rise of the Tomb Raider. So, this is, uh, this was quite a surprise. I ran this on the X12 mode, high settings again, and as you can see, the GTX 970 was way ahead, especially in 1080p, so we have 87.7 frames per second average for the 970 versus 70.2 uh, for the LX480. Again, in, in 1440p, 58.5 versus 50.1. I was expecting you know, the RX480 to, to provide better performance because the DX12, uh, DX12 was running, but, well, you know, it is what it is. Moving on to the division. Here, again, we see very, very close performance. Uh, the RX 480 managed to pull ahead again a little bit, so 76.6 versus 74.3, and then in 1440p uh, resolution we got 52.9 for the uh, RX 480 versus 50 frames per second for the GTX 970. And the Witcher 3, so this game is pretty, pretty heavy, pretty demanding, and I ran it at high preset, uh, hair works off, and medium preset for post processing. So as you can see, we got 97, uh, sorry, 79.3 uh, for the GTX 970, and then uh, 75.6 for the RX 480. And in 1440p, difference is really uh, insignificant. So 53 for the 970 and 51.2 for the RX 480. Well, looking at looking at the performance uh, overall, you know, the cards were basically, as I said earlier, trading blows. Uh, the difference wasn't huge, except in Rays of the Tomb Raider. I'm not sure why that happened. Maybe it's a, it's a driver um, situation here. I'm not sure what happened there, but overall, in, in across the board the cards were very very close all right guys there you have it the uh, radeon rx 480 so i personally was expecting a little bit more performance from the card however overall uh, it performed nicely and it, it kept basically at the same level as a super clocked gtx 970 uh, the evga model that we compared it to today now, what do we get with the new Radeon card uh, from AMD? So, uh, Polaris architecture, uh, FinFET, 14 nanometer manufacturing process, uh, fourth generation graphic core next, and 150 watt TDP. So, basically, the Polaris um, main point is the performance per watt improvement. Now, unfortunately, um, I don't have a uh, 290 or 390 card uh, to compare to, but it, it seems to, to run nice and quiet. I didn't really touch on the temperatures at stock because I didn't feel that it was, it was heating up or anything. It was staying within, uh, within spec, but in the overclocking review or overclocking video, I'll, I'm going to pay uh, specific attention to that, to the temperature when we push the card a little bit more. So all in all, uh, it's a nice little card, performed great at its price point. Um, right now, with the new um, cards from NVIDIA being the 1070 and the 1080, there is nothing really uh, at this price point uh, that could basically we could compare to for, for n the newer generation from NVIDIA so uh, that we'll, we'll wait and see what happens but for right now the Radeon RX 480 uh, is is basically providing similar performance to the GTX 970 with a little bit more future improvement if you consider the uh, 8 gigs of RAM uh, the new architecture and all the <clears throat> features and settings that AMD added to the Radeon software. 
So let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the uh, comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much and see you next time.